let me tell you something about that pseudo force first see when is this pseudo force to be used what will be the magnitude of the pseudo force and what will be the direction of the pseudo force these are the three things that one should know the first one when should the pseudo force be used see the answer for this is whenever you are trying to solve a problem in an accelerating frame of reference a pseudo force has to be used apart from the forces which are real and that you show in the free body diagram so the first point is when should the pseudo force be used and for that the answer is it has to be used when the problem is being solved in an accelerating frame of reference second what about the magnitude of the pseudo force it will be mass of the body which is being analyzed multiplied by acceleration of the frame of reference and third is what about the direction and it is 180 degrees opposite to the direction of acceleration of the frame of reference right so now let me read the problem here first see there is a lift which is moving down with an acceleration so had the lift been moving down or upwards without any acceleration then i think we would not have bothered about the pseudo force here but the lift is moving down with an acceleration and a man in the lift drops a ball inside it now the acceleration of that ball has to be observed by two people one is by the man who is in the lift and has dropped the ball and the other man is on the ground ground is an inertial frame of reference and the lift is a non inertial frame of reference therefore the acceleration of the ball as seen from an inertial frame and as seen from a non inertial frame cannot be equal so g and g ruled out both the accelerations cannot be g g minus a and g minus a wrong again because both are equal these two accelerations are also equal these two are also equal but the accelerations in the two frames cannot be equal a and g or g minus a and g are the right options now please remember that as the lift is going down with an acceleration pseudo force will be acting upwards therefore if you just look at the free body diagram of the ball one is mg which is acting downwards and that is the real force and this is the pseudo force which i have shown acting upwards and as i just now said it is mass of the body multiplied by acceleration of the frame of reference so the net force acting on the body would be m into g minus a and please remember i have again taken the force in the direction of acceleration to be positive so mg is positive and ma is negative so m into g minus a is the net force if you divide by mass you will get the acceleration as g minus a therefore the acceleration of the ball in the frame of reference of the lift is g minus a and the acceleration of the ball in the frame of reference of the ground is g so the answer is g minus a and g this is the answer So here is another problem on uh, pseudo force. So let me read it first. A block of mass m, see this is the block there, small block, is in contact with the cart C. Friction coefficient between the block and the cart is mu. Find the acceleration a of the cart that will prevent the block from falling down. So now let me draw the free body diagram of this block with respect to the cart remember see cart is an accelerating frame of reference and just now i had reminded you about the pseudo force so this is the block its weight is acting vertically downwards this is the frictional force which should be acting vertically upwards in order to prevent the block from falling down because of its weight this is the pseudo force see cart is moving towards the right and therefore the pseudo force direction has to be towards the left and what about the magnitude of the pseudo force it should be mass of the body being analyzed multiplied by the acceleration of the frame of reference so m a is the pseudo force and this is the normal reaction of the cart on the block now for the block to be at rest with respect to the cart all the forces should be well balanced therefore n should be exactly equal to m a and friction should be exactly equal to the weight but this friction being static 
its value cannot be more than the maximum value of the static friction which is mu into n and n is ma therefore this mg should be less than or equal to mu into n which is mu m a so mg should be less than or equal to mu m a or a should be greater than or equal to g by mu so this is the correct answer if the card continues to move with this acceleration then definitely you can expect the block to remain at rest with respect to the card and not fall down of course this you could have done just by looking at the options also without solving all this but then i doubt if you would have understood the concept involved like see here the first option says a should be greater than mg by mu and this is dimensionally incorrect you are talking about the acceleration and you are giving the force mu is a dimensionless quantity here also a is greater than g by m mu so this is also dimensionally wrong only these two are correct and therefore we had to solve this and decide whether this option is correct or d option is correct and that makes c option perfectly correct So here is one more uh, problem on friction. So let us read it. A horizontal force of 10 newtons is necessary to just hold it stationary, hold a block stationary rather against the wall. Coefficient of friction between the block and the wall is 0.2. Weight of the block is to be found. So if you look at the free body diagram of the block, it's like this. See this is the block whose weight is acting vertically downwards and you have pressed the block against the wall therefore this is the direction in which the normal reaction of the wall will be acting and this is the force you have applied on the block to hold it stationary and that is given to be 10 newtons. And now to prevent the block from falling down there should be a friction between the wall and the block and which should be acting in the vertically upward direction and it goes without saying that this friction should be static because you want the block to be stationary if it is not moving against the wall friction is not kinetic so this stationary makes the friction static and static friction value should be exactly equal to mg for the body to be in equilibrium so f should be equal to mg but friction being static it cannot take a value more than mu into n therefore this mg that you are expecting to be the value of the friction should be less than or equal to mu into n right and n itself is 10 newtons because you have pushed the block against the wall with a force of 10 newtons therefore the normal reaction of the wall on the block should also be equal to 10 newtons therefore mg which is the weight of the body that you want to find out should be less than or equal to mu is given to be 0.2 and n is 10 so mg should be less than or equal to 2 newtons so that makes the fourth option perfectly correct right so the maximum weight which can be held stationary is 2 newtons One more beautiful problem on uh, friction. See a block A of mass 2 kg is placed on another block B whose mass is 8 kg and both have been placed on a rough horizontal surface and the friction between the block B and the surface is given to be 0.5. The friction coefficient between the two blocks is given to be 0.4. Now he is asking you to find out the frictional force between A and B. So now the beauty of this problem is 
I hope you all agree that if this is the situation, if one body is kept on another and a force is applied on the lower one, do you agree that if at all the two bodies move, they should move together? Because um, the upper body, on the upper body you have not exerted any force at all. Therefore, if the lower body does not move, then there is no question of upper body moving alone. Do you agree with this wholeheartedly? Because uh, th this will be really very surprising and very strange if you see that you are trying to pull the body beneath another body and that is not ready to move and the upper body on which you have not applied any force at all has started moving. So this would be a very very strange phenomena. Therefore I hope you certainly agree that because you have applied the force on body B, if at all the body B moves then only A should move and if body B does not move then even A should not move. Right? Okay. So let us first verify whether by the application of 10 newtons of force is B ready to move on the horizontal floor or not. Because the problem with this is this surface is rough. Therefore, if this body were to be initially at rest and you start applying a force, this will move only when the force applied is more than the maximum value of the static friction between B and the ground. So let me first find out what is the value of the static friction between B and the ground. And that is given by the formula mu into n. This is the maximum value of the static friction, which is mu is 0.5 and n is the normal reaction of the ground on B, which should be equal to the weight of the two bodies. And weight of A is 2, a mass of A is 2 and mass of B is 8. Therefore, they make a mass of 10 kg and therefore the weight should be 100 newtons. So, the maximum value of the static friction between B and the ground is going to be 50 newtons. So, unless this 50 newtons of force is overcome by the force that you are going to apply, B will not be ready to move on the ground. And if B does not move, there is no question of A moving. right? You have applied a force of only 10 newtons, the maximum value of the static friction is 50. Therefore, this force will not make the body B move and therefore, A moving is ruled out. And if A does not move, how can there be any force acting on A? So, look at the free body diagram of A and realize what are the forces which are acting on A. One is the weight of A which is acting vertically downwards. Another is the normal reaction of B on A and we do not bother about these two forces because they are acting in the vertically uh, downward and upward direction. Now, if I say that there is a frictional force acting on A in the horizontal direction either this way or this way, then A has to move. But just now we have admitted that A cannot move. Therefore, this friction should be 0. Therefore, the correct option here is D. So, another important aspect of this chapter, Newton's laws of motion, that is about the impulse. See, please remember that impulse is always the change in the momentum that the particle has suffered. And here, he has given you a force versus time diagram. Therefore, the area under this particular diagram should directly give you the change in the momentum that the particle has suffered or the impulse as he asks. See force versus time diagram, area under the graph is Ft and Ft is nothing but Newton's second. Fine, so that is going to be the impulse. Okay, but please remember that the areas which are above the uh, time axis or you can say towards the positive of the force are to be taken as positive and those below the time axis or towards the negative of the force are to be taken as negative. Fine, so just calculate the area and get the answer. So this is a triangle here which is above the time axis and its area should be half of the base into height. So, base is 2. So, half of 2 is 1 and height is 6. So, the first area that I am going to consider say this one is 6. And then here is an area which is below the time axis. I am talking about this area. right? So, this is below the time axis and it is equal to 
2 into 3, so 6. But that is because a negative, so it is minus 6. And then there is one more rectangle here, which is above the time axis. I am talking about this area. And it amounts to uh, 4 into 3, that is 12. But because it is above the time axis, it should be plus 12. See, area of this triangle, half base into height is 6, above the time axis, so positive. This is a small rectangle here, length into breadth, so length is 2, breadth is 3, but below the time axis, so minus 6, and then this one, plus 12. So, plus 6 minus 6 gets cancelled, and 12 is the total area, and that should be the impulse acting on the particle or the change in the momentum the particle has suffered. So, that makes C option perfectly correct. Mm -hmm.